Let's get to the broader markets uh, and what to expect from all of this. Joining us right now is Joe Zeidel. He is chief investment strategist at Blackstone. And David Bonson, who's the founder, managing partner, and chief investment officer at the Bonson Group. And gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Thank you. Uh, we were having a conversation, I don't know if it was earlier this morning or yesterday, about whether um, bad news is really good news, that sort of Goldilocks scenario. You, you have some questions about that and some doubts about that. I do. I think the markets are going to have a hard time really charging higher here because we are in this Goldilocks scenario where the markets are expecting three to four cuts by the Fed, number one. And number two, they're expecting this really favorable trade resolution. And I think those are, are two risks out there that aren't really adequately priced in. It seems like the Fed is going to have a really hard time living up to the expectations of the market. You know, before the prospects of tariffs against Mexico were, were, uh, came up a few weeks ago, the market was pricing in one cut for 2019. The tariff threat against Mexico emerges, all of a sudden the market goes to three cuts. Well, now that threat is off the table for now, at least for now, and the market's pressed its bet and said, well, no, we actually want three to four cuts. Yeah, and I don't think those things are really priced into the market. The market's just saying, well, all this is going to work out and it's just all going to be fine. And we know that because we're, tr we're up you know, almost 17% year to date. We're trading at about 17 or 18 times earnings, and we don't have the earnings growth. So if we don't have earnings growth, what's really driving the market higher? I think it's the expectation that all these things are just magically going to work out. Well, how, how much of it is where rates stand right now? How much of it is where rates would have to come down to make prices look attractive at the I mean, you, In other words, you can get some multiple expansion yeah. if you get that, that uh, Fed funds rate lower. And I think a lot of that's been priced in. We've gotten about one turn since Powell's announcement last week. And so that's been sort of priced in. I think we're 13, 1,400 points higher. But I very much agree with Joe. The problem is it all uh, depends on the timeline we're talking about. Can you get a tradable rally if the Fed indeed does and throw more stimulus on the party. Perhaps. I'd be skeptical even of that, but I, I think that's possible. But in the intermediate term, it is mystifying to me what people believe is going to be the end here. Like, at some point in time, do they not think we're going to have to normalize, take away that punch bowl? And I don't think that's priced in at all as you look out maybe 12, 18, 24 months. You know, look, when you hear what Mario Draghi is saying today, maybe you think that punch bowl getting taken away is a much longer kind of trip than we may have thought even a month Absolutely. Ago. I think they're actually following our precedent, and, and then we're going to be following theirs. But we're, kind of, we're, kind of, we're kind of tied in with them. We, very right? much. And, and there's, no, there's no exception to this. Once you go to extraordinary monetary measures to stimulate the economy, which may very well be what they needed to do post-financial crisis, but when they didn't begin steps towards normalization in 14, 15, and, and really even in 16, when they kind of chickened out during uh, that, that uh, spook in, in January in the markets, the fact of the matter is that at some point this has to be normalized. They didn't quite get there. I agree he if went a bit too far. If the economy's slowing, what would you tell the Fed, what advise the Fed to be doing right now? It, it, well, I, I can answer that, but the problem is, Becky, that when they do cut late cycle versus mid cycle, it doesn't have a stimulative effect historically. And so I think that they end up pushing on a string. I most certainly think that's what Draghi faces in Europe. And so, unfortunately, sometimes what they maybe need to do is nothing at all. Joe, really quickly, what would you tell people to do with stocks? You know, I think over the next six months, we're going to see volatility. I think the risks are the downside. I would be a buyer in any amount of that volatility. And the reason is because I don't think this is the end of the cycle. This is not the end of the bull market. It's not the end of the economic expansion. I think this will look like a late cycle pause. Mm -hmm. But the things that cause recessions here in the U.S. are just not anywhere near on the radar. You know, the two things that will drive a recession in the U.S. are number one, when businesses overinvest, where they become too confident and deploy too much capital. That's not happening. And secondly is when you get like uh, wealth destruction, when you either get a drop in home values or a significant like bear market inequities. That's what causes recessions. Neither one of those are on, on the horizon. So I think any amount of volatility or any setbacks we get in the market, I actually think is a viable opportunity. It's just that up 17% year to date when earnings growth is flat mm -hmm. or even at risk of turning negative is a clear warning sign. We do have an election coming up. Yeah, and you know... Bernie's up by nine, supposedly. Yeah, and, and you don't think that might cause a little bit of a problem in the equity markets and the economy in general, or no? Well, perhaps in 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 in, in the mid part of like next year and beyond, but well, that's not right off. now, I don't see I don't see really any effect there because it's just all Ber it's Bernie all Sanders gone. being the president of the United States would be terrible for markets. Bernie Sanders uh, will not drive draw the market lower because Bernie Sanders is not going to be president of the United States. Okay. All right, yeah, well, that's what uh, George Clooney told me about Trump. So <laughs> this is true. Right. Am I Clooney in that analogy? Yeah, yeah, you are. That's pretty good for you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. David, Joe, thank you guys for coming in.